Hi, I'm Linda from paperboutiquewithlinda.com. Today I want to show you how to make a quick mini envelope album. You can use any size envelope to make this cute album. I'm not going to go over sizes today. I'm just going to show you the techniques because the measurements are going to vary based on the type of envelopes that you use. First, I want to show you some of the envelopes that you could use for this cute little project. You could use um, an A9 envelope, which is a five and three quarters by eight and three fourths envelopes. And I think that would be such a fun size. You can also use, and this is what Martha Stewart, not Martha Stewart, but Anna Griffin usually uses with her card making kits, what is called an A7 envelope. It's a five and a fourth by seven and a fourth size. And this has a cute flap, so you could, you know, do something a little bit different with that. Next is what we call an A6 envelope. And it's a four and three quarters by six and a half envelope. Now, when I started making this mini album, I thought I was using A6 envelopes, and I wasn't. So this is just something to keep in mind. I was using some envelopes from my stash and instead of being like the four and three quarters by six and a half inch size, mine are four and three fourths by six and an eighth. So that's something to keep in mind that not all envelopes are a uniform size. And lastly, this project would also be very cute with an A2 envelope. That's a four and three eighths inch envelope by five and three quarters. For this particular mini album, mini envelope album, I used this Ocean Breeze stack from Die Cuts with a View. It was on sale for $9.99 at Joann's and I was thrilled. I did happy dance when I saw it. I also used a lot of the cut aparts, at least that's what I call them, the cut aparts in the album. And you'll see, see those as we go through. So that's the paper I used. I used every piece from, or I mean, my entire album was from this collection, except for this particular navy mat. That was just a piece of navy paper. Well, let me tell you a little bit about the binding I used. For this mini envelope album, I used my Levenger punch and Rollabine discs. You could use the arc punch system and the arc disc that you can purchase at Staples. I have several videos on my YouTube channel about the Levenger punch and about the arc punch. You could also use a, the bind it all or the cinch to bind it. You could also punch holes using your crocodile, tie it with ribbon, or use it with metal binder rings. Well, let's talk about the covers. First of all, what I typically do is cut my covers about an eighth of an inch larger than the envelopes. And like I said, it's gonna depend on your measurements depending on the size envelope you use. So I like to cut them an eighth of an inch larger. In this case, I took one of the cut aparts from the collection and matted it with just a piece of navy paper and used dimensional adhesive in between. What I did on the cover, on the front cover and the back cover, because my paper wasn't double-sided, is I cut out two pieces of cardstock and glued them together. And just a word of caution when you're making this album using any type of binding punch system, don't want to have your adhesive right here. So I used, in some cases, I used the quick dry adhesive along the corners. You could also use score tape just along these three corners. So that's what I recommend is that you kind of keep away from the binding so it doesn't gum up your binding system. Once again, this is a cut apart and I just um, used some snail tape and attached it to the cover. Super easy. This is also one of the cut aparts. And the great thing with this binding system is you can just remove it, move it any, you can move your pages anywhere within the album. Another cut apart. Now for this page, or for this particular album, you're gonna need three 
envelopes. This is an envelope that we'll use, and I just use the front and back, and I'll show you this in a moment. Front and back, and that. So it's only really three envelopes, front and back, and then the back cover. To start with, on this particular one, let me just bring in, let's see, I have one somewhere, just a plain envelope. All I did is cut a rectangle for the flap. I cut it twice and then just attach them together. Now you could leave the pocket open here, but on this first page, I just wanted it to have a solid mat. So I didn't leave a pocket and I'll show you how to leave a pocket in a moment. What I did throughout this album is I went ahead and created the pages, like I created the cover, then I'll create this page, and then I punched them all, and then I went back and added decorations. I also like to do mock-ups just to try it. So in this case, I did a mock-up, and you can tell I just did it really quick and a quick version of it. I'm gonna go back in and use my crocodile corner, I think they call it corner chomper to round the corners. I just like that look. And if you notice, the envelopes are a little slanted. You can follow that slant line. I just did two rectangles and, and glued them together. But remember, when you're gluing this piece down to the envelope to avoid this punch. A lot of mini albums, people will just go ahead and mat up to here to make it quick and easy. Some of them will just, some people will just do a strip here. I covered it in its entirety, which took a little bit longer. So there's so many things you can do with this album. And this again is just the front, the front side using the front side of the envelope. And we'll do the back in just a second. Now for the other side of the envelope, I love these two pages. Now this is just one side of the envelope with the flap and then this is the other side. I love, and I call these flip outs, I love how the flip out works. This one just flips out to the top and this one flips out to the bottom. I don't know if you can see that. I, I wanna leave it so you can get as close of a view as possible. This page is really easy to do. All you're going to do to create your flip out is decide what size you want. I always make sure that I don't go over so I'm in the binding. I kind of centered this one. Then once you determine how long you want it, in this case I did a mock-up, go ahead and just score it a half an inch from the edge. Okay? And then remember this is the other the side without the flap. So all you're going to do is glue this, put, um, I like to put score tape here and just make sure that it's level or even, I should say, with the top of the envelope and glue this side down, okay? Once you've done that, you'll just open it up and this will be attached. You can add another piece of tape on the top, um, um, like a scotch tape if you want. I found that the score tape works just fine, okay? Then you're gonna add your mat which in this case is this navy. And what I do before I tape this down is I just use my circle punch and punch like a little opening so it's easy to get in and out. Now because I want a pocket, I'm only going to glue this down on three sides. I'm gonna, or two sides. I'm gonna glue it here and remember not to get to the, the area that you're going to bind and then I glue it here. Just a little trick I use. I use the adhesive on those pieces because I love the score tape, but every once in a while when you're putting something in your pocket, it can get stuck on that score tape. So I, I like a cleaner line with the glue. And that's all I did. And then I just cut a little square out here just for a little accent. You could do a, a quarter of a mat. So when you're done, you'll have this cute pocket here. You'll have this flip out. And just remember if it's directional paper when you're matting this side of it to um, make sure that you've got it going in the right direction. And once again, this is the cut apart. So this is basically one envelope, the side with the flap and the side without the flap. 
Now for this piece, what I did is I just used the side without the flap and I reversed the process. So I had the flip out going, going this direction. Same process and then I just glued this little cut apart on three sides to make another pocket. You can decorate this in so many different ways. So then the other side of our second envelope, the side with the flap, I just did like I did the first page. But in this case, what I did is I didn't glue this down. I left it open for a pocket. So I put glue like right to here and then glue along here. This is the flip out, very same thing that we did. This time I cut it a little bit longer. My sister in making her mini albums uses a lot of magnets. And in one of the more complex albums we're gonna do in the future, I'll show you how to use the magnets. So once again, super easy. I, I went ahead and lined this, but to make it even easier, you wouldn't even have to. You could just mat it. You could even leave it just, just plain. Okay, so that page is done. And then this page, this is just another cut apart. And this page is just having the envelope. In this case, I had the flaps face each other. There are no rules. And I left a pocket again. And then I just created a mat, a photo mat, and rounded the corner. Super easy. And then on the back of this envelope, I did just a little different technique. I created a side flip and it's really pretty basic. There's the envelope, the side without, obviously without the flap. So you'll go ahead and score it a half an inch. And I always, I find a half an inch is perfect. It kind of holds. And then you'll just glue it, glue it onto the envelope, making sure that the edges are even. Open it up and then just put the mat over it. It's that, it looks so much more complex. And if you get it, even with the edge, you can just open super easy. And because you're gluing this onto the back, if you put, just put a line of glue here, not getting in the binding again in the line of glue here, you have another pocket here that you can, oh, let me just slip that in here, that you can slip something in. So you've got all sorts of different pockets. And finally, this is the back cover and we just repeated what we did on the front cover and I did a cut apart and matted it with some paper and then just did a dimensional. Now, like I mentioned, I went ahead and did all of these pages like this and then I punched them all and then I went back and added the embellishments. And the, reasons I go, the reason I do that when I go back and add like the mat is because you'll want to make sure that you allow for whatever binding system you have and then you can center it. I, I don't know why, but this page is one of my favorites. I just love the colors. Well, it's super easy and have fun with it and you can make it any size that you want. Well, I'd like to thank you for watching and for more projects and ideas, please visit me at www.paperboutiquewithlinda.com. Bye-bye.